All right, so this is uh, Mark Hawley. We're in the shop at Metal Tech 4x4 here in Newburgh, Oregon. And we're gonna be installing a set of ARB skid plates. Uh, the skid plates made by ARB are a, a really good um, budget option skid plate. They work very well, they're lightweight, and they're not overly expensive. Um, I wouldn't use them for hardcore rock crawling. I wouldn't go run the Rubicon with them. But at the same time, they work excellent for what probably 90, 95% of us are using our trucks for, and that's gonna be overlanding, um, basic off-road trails, that sort of thing. And they're an excellent skid plate for that. And what it's doing is it's replacing the factory Toyota uh, plates. And Toyota actually calls these stone guards. They don't call them skid plates, they call them stone guards. And you're gonna see why, they're really, they're pretty thin, they're not super thick. Um, but this truck here, I mean, we got, we got stones in the truck. It's definitely been on the trail. Uh, so we're gonna have lots of surprises as we pull the skids, stuff falling down. I'm wearing my safety glasses, of course. And um, we'll just go through this process. Um, one of the first things we're gonna do before we do any installation work, of course, is that we're verifying that what we're gonna be working on and what's gonna be coming off the truck and make sure we have the proper tools for it. And we're gonna be reaching up inside and releasing a bunch of these bolts to be able to take them off. And if memory serves me correctly, these are a 13, if I remember correctly, 13. Um, nope, 12. <laughs> uh, 12 millimeter bolt. Uh, the head is 12 millimeters. Of course, the bolt is probably a six millimeter bolt, but a 12 millimeter socket is gonna come in here and be our socket of use. We're gonna pull, we got bolts here. Up inside this area here are two bolts that are recessed back up inside. And then right behind them are two more recessed bolts for the second plate. There's a front plate, a second plate, and then the second plate has two bolts that are easily identifiable that are sticking out um, on the cross member right there. We're gonna pull these off and then set them off to the side. Uh, we're gonna expect lots of junk falling down as we do it. Um, but uh, we'll start with the front plate. These bolts have come off. We're gonna notice that it actually swings forward because the little hooks that it has, it hooks into the frame. Those are designed to make maintenance a lot easier. Uh, so it's not falling on you uh, if you're doing oil changes and stuff. But we're gonna go ahead and pull this plate off. We're gonna pull the secondary off and pull the little skid off the back. And then we'll go ahead and pull the ARB parts out, lay them on the floor and identify those parts and start talking about where they're gonna go on. Skid plate will swing down now, at least it should. There it goes. Lots of dirt hitting the deck. This is nice high iron red dirt that they grow Pinot Noir grapes in here in the Pacific Northwest. Unhooks and she's off. Pretty lightweight, not super heavy. Uh, we're ready to get into the next one. So these are actually easy to see. You can actually see the bolt now. It's hidden back up in here. And we're gonna take those off for this skid. Now this skid doesn't have anything that like hangs and holds it up there. So when you pull the last, when you pull the last bolt out, it's gonna come down to you. Just be prepared for it. And most people are gonna be doing this laying on their backs. So you just put your knee up here and hold it up while you take the last one out. Obviously we're doing this, you know, Metal Tech is a commercial shop. We do have it on the lift. Um, so we're taking advantage of using the lift for that. Uh, and, uh, but for most people doing it on a driveway, it's so easy to, it's very easy to do on a driveway. So I'm gonna pull this last bolt and this plate's gonna be ready to come down on me. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use my head. Oh yeah, there's a little, this does have the safety clip. Okay, so this truck has not had this plate off very much. And there's a little clip that they have back here that clips on like right here. And that was still engaged. A lot of these that have been on and off trucks ends up not being engaged. So I wasn't expecting that to even be there, but it was. So that allows you to put this up and then slide it forward and it clips onto the back of the, uh, the front suspension cross member. Uh, so that's kind of cool that was still engaged. So I wasn't expecting that. I was just ready for it to come down on my head. All right, so 
This is your transfer case on your truck. Uh, so the transfer case has this little transfer case skid guard on it, which you definitely want. You need these things. This, this area takes, takes a hit. This is a mission critical part of kit for your truck. You need the transfer case to stay healthy. It is aluminum. Uh, you don't want it getting hit uh, on rock. So this guard is actually upgraded with the ARB kit. And these bolts, we're gonna be taking them out and replacing this guard with its own little standalone unit. But we'll do that in a minute here, but let's go ahead and first introduce the ARB parts. I've actually never installed one of these before. Like a lot of people are gonna be using this video. I'm figuring it out as we go here. So we have, uh, we have these wonderful instructions from Australia uh, and uh, including a CAD drawing. And it's great to see that D Brown and Jay Grudy uh, gave us this nice drawing for a drilling template. So we'll see what that drilling is, um, if that really applies. We got instructions that are referencing every single variant of the Prada 120, 150 truck, which is pretty comical. So here's some hard, this is the hardware that came from the pack. For the GX470, we're gonna be using these two spacers in the front. We're gonna be using these two longer uh, bolts that are socket cap, socket head. You're gonna need a six millimeter Allen key for that. Um, so have that ready to go. And then you're gonna have your standard little locking washers, which are, or, excuse me, locking nuts. Excuse me, that has a, these are flange nuts with locks built into them. We've got our washers and lock washers. Uh, there are um, pretty consistent on that. You're gonna see on the bolts, there's actually uh, quite a few of the exact same bolt, and then you're gonna have a couple of little odd ones that are a little bit different. And then we're gonna have a uh, things that you may not have seen before. These are called cage nuts. And the reason that that's a cage nut is that it's literally a nut inside a cage. And this allows this to be clipped onto a piece of uh, sheet metal or a panel, and then the bolt will go right into it and lock it in place. It's a way to add threaded, threads to something. So this kit comes with three different sizes. There's these little tiny ones here, and I believe those may be six or five millimeter. These are gonna be eight millimeter. And then this one single one is a single 10, one big boy. And that explains why there's a single 10 uh, 8.8 um, bolt with a captured lock nut or lock washer, excuse me, and washer. Those are actually captured on there that it doesn't come off. So we have that in there. They gave us a cage nut tool. Um, this is typically used to reach back in somewhere if you can't get in like side of a frame or something. I don't think we're using this with this install, but that's also part of the, one of the things they gave us. So there, there's extra stuff here that we don't, we're probably not gonna need. This is a drop down for the uh, mid plate. Uh, if you need to lower the mid plate to help clear your exhaust, if it's gonna be rattling or touching the exhaust, they gave you this, this drop down that you put on there to help lower uh, the plate so it help clears your exhaust. That's helpful if you got an aftermarket big exhaust, but in theory, this should go on without having to modify it because this is a stock exhaust on a petrol Prado 120 GX470. They have you midway through the instructions going back and adding cage nuts to already installed panels. Um, I can tell you that uh, honestly, these will be a way easier to install right now before we put those panels up. So we're gonna put these on. We're gonna start with these M8s and that front panel takes three and the mid panel takes one. So I'm just gonna put those on while it's on the floor. Easier. Now, let's see how easy they pop in. All right, so we're at the cross member for where the transmission support is. And they're gonna have us put a single, the single 10 millimeter, the big one, cage nut from behind into this little hole right here. And so um, first off, will it fit the hole? I don't know. So we're gonna test it from the outside and go, yep, that actually goes in there. Um, and I don't know how that's gonna work. That to me looks like it's gonna spin when we go to tighten this thing up. We're probably gonna have to put some pressure from behind with our finger uh, when we go to tighten it. But um, for right now, it looks like it just goes in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to monkey this little thing in here. There we go. All right, so quickly identify the parts. We saw, you saw, us, you saw me earlier put the cage nuts in. Uh, this is our front panel. Um, it's obviously the, the pretty one with the logo on it. You're gonna see that from the front of the truck. Then we're gonna have our mid panel. 
Med panel has a flange that's opposite of the rear flange. You can see how that mounts up there, and you can see how those cage nuts are going to get used. This is the mid panel. It's going to use the factory bolts that we use to pull this one off. It's going to use the factory ones right there. And then the transmission guard is this thing. This is protecting the transmission. And we have the single cage nut. And then once again, we have a flange that's going to come together, and we're going to be able to bolt those together, uh, creating the transmission guard. Now, the transmission guard is going to go back, and we have the, uh, uh, um, we want this to clear as we go back on the transmission guard. So there's the rear cross member that we're going to be bolting this bracket on, on the rear cross member. And then it is going to be, this is going to bolt directly onto this cross member here. So they've made this very universal so it could fit the different trucks. Um, part of it is figuring out how it fits your specific truck. In this case, it's a GX470, and we've kind of figured out how that works. And then that last little piece in the very back is a uh, a la carte by itself uh, trans uh, transfer case guard. And that's going to bolt on all independent, separate from this entire assembly. So the little guard itself, we can put it on right now, um, or we can go ahead and just start from the front and work our way back. So we'll go ahead and start at the front, work our way back, and then we'll put the little guard on last. Before we go ahead and put the, start putting the plates up, we're just gonna do this pre-prep stuff rather than wait till we've got plates in the way. Uh, maybe we need more room for something. I just like to do as much in advance that I can that is uh, pre-assembling, getting us ready for everything just to go on very quickly and smoothly. So one of the things are we're back at the transmission cross bracket or the transfer case cross method um, or transmission cross bracket, yes. Where the transfer case is, the transmission mounts to. And we just put our little cage nut back up in here. We made sure it would fit. It does fit, it's in there. But one of the things we're gonna do is this is the guard or the bracket that they have us bolting. It's gonna use that cage nut and then it's gonna be coming up and it's gonna be using two bolts that are on the heat shield that's protecting your U-joint. Now, let me help you identify what this part is. The heat shield for the U-joint is this little spoon looking thing and it is held on to the transmission cross bracket by two bolts that have 13 millimeter hex heads. The bolts again are probably only a six millimeter bolt, but that is a 13 or, no, excuse me, I'm sorry, 12. 12 millimeter hex um, is what they're holding on. So I'm gonna be taking this off and this bracket or this, this piece is gonna come off. We're gonna put the plate up there and then we're gonna put this piece back on again on the outside of that bracket. Uh, but we'll go ahead and do it and I'll show it to you. All right, so I'm gonna use my 12 millimeter uh, wrench and loosen these bolts, to, and actually, not just loosen them, I'm gonna take them off. Okay. There's our heat shield. So under the vehicle, we're putting these up. They got lock washers and stuff, but uh, you know, if you can use use Loctite or a thread locker of some type, not just the brand Loctite. Use a, a blue medium grade Loctite. Don't use the red stuff. You don't need that. Uh, but a blue grade. One of the main reasons we like using Loctite. Of course, we don't want things vibrating and coming out. But Loctite, the thread locker, actually helps you in the future service your truck. So if you got to take something apart, the the thread locker actually when it dries with the threads creates a water barrier and it keeps water from creeping in and creating corrosion at your threads. So it makes it far easier five, six years from now to disassemble something um, without having to worry about corrosion of the bolts like being rusted to their little nuts. And we're talking nuts attached to cage nuts. So these things are not the most bulletproof things. So putting a little bit of Loctite on it's gonna really save you in the future. So, or the next person taking it apart in the future. So we're gonna put a little, bit of, little blue Loctite on what we need. So now we can go ahead and raise our guard up. Now there's two different positions that they're giving us. They're giving us an upper position and a lower position based on the vehicle we have. I'm looking at this when I mock this up and I'm seeing that when this is mocked up on the lower position, our skid plate is going to be hitting this exhaust. So that's not something we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and put this on the lower one 
And the lower one looks a lot better. Um, we're gonna be close, but it looks like it's gonna clear. So I'm gonna go on, what are, well, let's say lower one. I'm gonna be going on these two upper, the upper assembly, not the lower ones. Gotta go to lower, it's gonna be too high. We're gonna hit the exhaust with a cross piece. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on here now. I'm gonna put the 10 millimeter in first just to hold it in place. And again, that cage nut's gonna wanna spin on me. So I'm just gonna kind of lightly get this started just to act as a pivot or a hinge to hold it up there. And uh, now, now I don't have to use multiple hands. Now I can come up here and I have to put the heat shield on and you definitely wanna put this heat shield back. You don't wanna cook your U-joint. Your U-joint's right above it, coming right from your, uh, uh, your well, the U-joint's coming out of the transfer case, going directly towards your front differential. You want your heat shield. So I'm gonna put that back up here. I'm gonna bring this up along with my eight millimeter bolt and we've got ourselves a nice little tight area to work inside of now because we have a flange here. So I'm using the heat shield to create pressure why I put this bolt in and it's pretty clear I'm gonna have to come in with a socket extension to get this to get this through. All right so we got our bolts loosely in. We fought these they sure don't give you a lot of space to reach inside there. You can't come up from below and coming from the sides a little hard. Uh, I ended up using a quarter inch drive with an extension. Uh, the, they're eight millimeter bolts, but the heads of them are 13 using the ones that are provided in the kit. So the ones you hold out are a 12 millimeter hex head for an eight millimeter bolt, uh, JDM standard, uh, where they always make the heads just slightly smaller. Um, whereas the ones provided in the kit here uh, have a 13 millimeter hex head with an eight millimeter bolt. So it's a really tight area to get into, but by using a um, quarter inch drive with a 13 millimeter on it, the, the drive is skinny enough to fit past the exhaust, get in there nice and tight, gave me the extensions to be able to tighten this down and get them snugged up. So now they're all snugged up across. We're ready to go ahead and tighten the things out right. Uh, go ahead and sync them for our installation. So this rear, on this one side of the 10 millimeter, uh, I'm worried about that cage nut spinning, so I'm gonna be putting pressure on the back when I tighten that one up. And then the other two, I'm not too worried about. Those are good to go. Those are actually threaded into the um, cross member. So this 10 millimeter bolt has a 17 millimeter hex head on it. So I have a 17 millimeter hex head. We're gonna go ahead and snug this baby up. And the cage nut's holding. It's actually not spinning, which is good. Like I said, my finger is on that cage nut right now. Now I'm not using power tools um, for putting things on. Uh, power tools in installation is a very fast way to over torque and break things. So we're not gonna be using power tools for that. Um, we're gonna go going in and snugging these up. Again, this is a uh, cage nut. It's got a lock washer, a washer. We don't need to come in here and co totally go to Gorilla Town on this thing. Uh, it is a 10 millimeter, pretty hefty bolt. But again, it's just connected to the cage on the back. We don't wanna put a lot of torque on that. All right, so now I'm gonna do the other side. All right, there we go. So rear cross member mount is attached and it is close to this exhaust. Now they did give us this drop extension business, which I believe goes there if we were gonna go to lower that down, but let's try not to lower it if we don't have to. Um, but if we need to, we will. Okay, so now at this point, we'll go ahead and move to the front. We'll start putting the front plate on. Uh, we're gonna use the original bolts that the front plate, the other plate was put on with first, and then start working our way back. The ones in the back are the original ones. The ones in the front, of course, are gonna be the uh, socket heads cap screws, and we're gonna be using the spacers that are provided in the kit for the Prada 120. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these up. And uh, fortunately, I got a helper that just came by that's gonna help me lift this up and hold it in place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't planning on helping, just, but just turns out. he just happens to be here. So we're gonna be bringing this up. So we're gonna get, this is gonna go to the back hole. That'll go to the other back hole. Good? Cool. All right. Just can hold that there. Yeah. So. Way easier the helper. You up?
that one. And let me get that back one. And it made these skids fit like five different trucks. So one of the things that we're all, we're going in now and just snugging these up. We're not torquing them down. We're not doing the final tightening. We're just snugging them up so the plate's in place. So we can start working our way back, adding each additional plate as we work our way back. So the rear bolts are in, the front bolts are in, the spacers in the front are in. This plate is basically in its right spot. We'll torque it all up at the very end, but let's go ahead and move on to the mid plate. Me and my Loctite. Loctite and I are tight. There you go. Yeah, bad joke. So, mid, this is the under the this is the oil pan mid skid. We got a mount here. It's going to go up to the uh, engine cross member and the front suspension cross member. We're going to put the other bolt there. So these two bolts are going to go in, and then we have these two, these three M8s are going to go into these cage nuts. And as we remember from before, cage nuts, we don't want to go too crazy on torquing them. So we're going to pull this up and set that in place. All right, so let's get these started. These are, again, we're using the factory bolts that were used that came off the other, off the uh, stock stuff to put this up, put these back ones in. Then obviously the front will be Is it in there? The front will be the uh, the new M8 using the cage nuts. So a couple good threads in there. Make sure this isn't going to fall down on my head. We're good. Make sure of that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks, Chris. And now I'm going to reach up through this hole, really tiny little area. I'm going to put this bolt in there. This is fun. Started. This one's on the outside you can see. Just gotta get that perfect angle. Yeah. And these are gonna be the 13 millimeter head once again. And once again, everything's going in just snug. We're not, nothing's getting tightened. We're gonna tighten it when we're near to, near to done. Well, the back ones are the factories. So those are the 12 millimeter. All right, so the mid, the mid uh, skid plate is in, uh, going under the, trans, or the, under the engine. And now we're gonna do the transmission skid. That's gonna come back and bolt onto our little piece that we already put in. So, and of course, all along, all of our cage nuts are already in place. So I'm not having to try to get them in on the truck because I did all that on the ground. So uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this next piece in, put it up. I'll be able to put the uh, outside bolts on. Obviously uh, those are accessible since the hands can fit right here. And then the other bolt, of course, is gonna come from there. So uh, let's put this next one on. <laughs> All right, so I'm cheating a little bit here. Um, being on a lift, uh, I need a helper to hold this in place while I put the bolts in. Uh, my helper just ran off to uh, get back to helping customers on the phone. So um, I'm gonna use a screw jack here to help bring this up in place. Now again, on the driveway, floor jack. Floor jack's your friend, let it hold the parts in place while you do this. It's actually, that's probably easier on the driveway that way. Got my center hole lined up. It's just gonna hold it in place. I'm gonna check for my fitment. I'm looking in the back. I see I got, it is fitting there. We are, it is outstanding actually. It's gonna clear um, the exhaust. I thought this lip was gonna hang over the back at where the exhaust is, and it's not. It's gonna be, it's gonna be hitting just dead on right there. 
I think we're good. I think I'm happy with where it's at. So we're gonna go ahead and keep moving forward with this. Okay, so now I can go ahead and start putting the fasteners in. So I got our eight millimeter with a little bit of Loctite on it. We got our lock washer in washer. And this again is going into a cage nut. So we're gonna be careful with that cage nut. We don't overstress it. Cause it's just a little cage nut. All right, and these outer ones, So these outer ones are going to be where we can put a nut on the back side. So we're not going to put a lock washer on the stack. It's going to be just washer, bolt washer. It's going to go through, then we're going to put the lock nut on, and then it has those serrated flange nuts, which kind of is overkill. They gave us washers to use with the flange nut, but we don't put the washer with this because we're not trying to lock this against the washer. We're trying to lock this against the base. So we're not going to put a washer on that. So this is just going to go up. And just go right through the hole. Let's see if I could do this blindly. So we're at the back end, and uh, we're going to go ahead and put these up through the back, and we're going to put our, our flange nuts on. And again, I am keeping it with just the flange nuts against the base, I'm not putting that extra washer in there because it doesn't need to be. All right, so we got our bolts in. I'm done with the screw jack. We can go ahead and let her help her go away. So at this point, the primary part of the skid plate system is actually in place. So everything's on. And so at this point, I can go ahead and start tightening up our bolts. We're gonna go ahead and snug them up and call the front half of this install uh, completed. Oh yeah, good flange lock nut. See, that's locking itself already. If I had a washer there, it'd be like locking itself to the washer, which is smooth to its main piece. So that makes that a lot easier. So I'm not grilling this, only an eight millimeter. These I believe are an 8.8, .8 they are, which is like a grade five in the uh, SAE, pretty mild. We don't want to over torque these things. Now with every, Every time you install something on in your vehicle, especially aftermarket stuff, but even OEM stuff, you're gonna to wanna to come back after about 500 miles and check your bolts. Just check your nuts. Make sure that you're not, you don't have anything that's backing off on you. Now, also with these flange nuts, again, flange nut, that's a locking flange nut, I'm not using the wrench and I'm not turning these. The reason for that is that I want that serration to stay nice and crisp and sharp and straight and lock itself into the part that's right behind it. So I'm not turning those nuts at all. I'm only turning the bolt. And the bolt's turning really easily and I'm being very careful with the torque that I'm putting on. I'm not over torquing it because it is considered a wet torque right now because I have thread locker on those threads. So we don't want to come in here and grill it because the thread locker is going to allow me to put way more torque on those threads than what those threads really need to have. So we have to jump back and forth between 12 millimeter and 13 since the JDM bolts that are 8 millimeter have a 12 millimeter head on them. And the bolts from ARB are 13. All right, now we're gonna do those front hidden ones. Where I gotta reach up from inside. And lastly, our six millimeter socket head cap screws in the front. Again, not over torquing. It's those are lubricated threads with that, with that Loctite on there. All right, there we go. We got our skid plates on, the primary skids are on. Now we can work and go back to the 
transfer case and put the little transfer case to get on by itself. All right, so here's our little skid plate for the rear for the transfer case. So it's gonna use all of these existing holes that are here as long as a couple of bolts that are currently not with the little skid right now. So we're gonna take the factory skid off to put this on first. We'll get that. bit more area a little thicker and it's grabbing onto more bolts in the back it's not gonna fit with you. all right so here's what we got it's gonna use not these bolts the the uh, these threaded bungs it's gonna use the actual bolts holding the transfer case together. So we're gonna be taking these four bolts off, which is technically kind of separating the transfer case. Um, it is sealed, there's sealing in there. So it, sh it shouldn't start leaking. We should be able to pull this out, but it's gonna, we have to take those off. And then obviously there's like a little group P thing here. We're gonna have to slide that over first to be able to get this to go on. And then we can go ahead and put the other bolts in. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna put the stock bolts back in these holes now, just to plug the holes. Um, it's not gonna hurt anything. So I got our six point 12 millimeter socket. I'm gonna take these nuts out, or these bolts, excuse me. Come out. I'm gonna keep track of these as far as which ones came out of where, just in case if one's slightly uh, longer than the other ones. I want to make sure I'm using the correct ones. And because this is holding the transfer case together, we're going to take a second and pull open the torque specs. This is something that's going to get the torque wrench put on it. So when we're done with this, we're going to actually torque these to whatever the torque specs are. This is the transfer case. It's kind of a mission critical piece of equipment on our truck. And again, when we put these in, we're not going to use an impact or a power tool especially on this, because you don't want to over torque or rip the threads out of your aluminum casting of your transfer case. That would be terrible. So far, all the nuts, all the bolts are looking the same. All right, so we're gonna bring this up and because this flange hits this webbing, we know we gotta come in here first. That's gonna be one of our first pieces that we're gonna come up in. And then our back, is gonna come up as well. And we're showing it is just slightly not wide enough to fit. So that's gonna take a small mallet to uh, persuade those ears to go back. But rather than hitting on our transfer case, I'm actually just gonna use a crescent wrench and uh, bend these flanges back just a little bit to help give it that space that it needs. The distance from here to here is just not quite wide enough. So I just need this ear to bend out just a small amount. So to help move that, I'm gonna use a crescent wrench because it's a nice flat jaw. And we're getting below, I'd like to be close to that, to that bend, but all we gotta do is just bend it out slightly. So I'm gonna be able to brace this, give it a little bit of, just tweak it out just a little bit, just to make it a little easier to move. All right. Small little bit, that probably will allow us to, oh, look at that, it slides right up now in the back, just fine. So I can go ahead and set my stock bolts back in. There we go. Excellent, those are started. Now I can go start putting the, the transfer case stock bolts back in again.
All right, so the rear hole, the rear bolt holes on the bottom were, were not lining up too well. Um, we needed to push this up. And again, if you're doing this on a driveway, just use a floor jack, put a little pressure on it. That's all it took. It went up no problem. All the other bolts are still loose. It's not putting extra excessive stress or anything on, on the transfer case, so we're okay. Um, we just needed to do that in order to get those bolts to go up and find where they needed to go. So those are in. So now I can go ahead and, and come around and start tightening these babies down. Um, and then of course I am gonna pull the torque settings so we can set the torque correctly. All right, so we got a factory Toyota manual. Yes, some people still have actual paper manuals. We have the original manuals. Um, so our torque specs for the lower part of the housing, I was way off. It's actually only 21 foot pounds. So we're gonna do 21 foot pounds and uh, uh, torque, off, torque off the back of that and call it done. All right, so we got our torque wrench set to 21 and uh, I'm gonna come up here and torque these babies in. Now with these just being a, um, these are just the bolts holding the skid plate in. We don't need to get into a torque setting on these. We're gonna snug them down, and make them nice and snug, not over torque them. We know it's only 21 foot pounds in this aluminum casting. So we're gonna keep it pretty mild on there. And then keep in mind, we have Loctite on these OEM ones that are gonna help lock these babies in there. All right, so here we are. We have our little skid about back or on the truck now. So to recap, we've, Replay, or we pull off those four lower factory bolts from the transfer case that actually holds the transfer case together. Those came out. Um, the, the two front mounting bolts are reused that are used on the factory skid plate that we've just replaced. The factory skid plate mounting points, we put the bolts back into just to protect the threads. And then we put the new skid on, and as the new skid went on, we needed to open up the ear just a little bit in the back, it slid up there, no problem. And then we put the four bolts back into the transfer case that are the parts that hold the transfer case together. We looked it up in the, o, in the OEM manual, found the torque spec of 21 foot-pounds, and we've torqued all four of those at 21 foot-pounds. We alternated from one side to the other and then worked our way across. And this now is, is installed. At this point, we have our skids on and the truck is done. Uh, this truck is completed. Uh, We've gone through, verified all the bolts. Everything's nice and tight. We've got our Loctite on everything and I'm confident for this to be ready to go hit the trail. So that's the installation on ARB skid plates that went onto a GX470. This installation is gonna be very applicable to any 4Runner, like a fourth gen 4Runner or an FJ Cruiser because it's, it's the exact same set of skids. Um, and then also we see that as the Prado 150 as well. So I'm pretty confident they're gonna, the version of these that's for the 150 will fit the, the late model 4Runners too. So pretty confident about that. So, um, but there we go, there's our installation and we're completed. So at this point, we'll go ahead and drop the truck down um, and get ready to hand it back off to the customer.